Welcome to Papa's Workshop. In today's video, I want to be able to etch glass with the diode laser. A lot of people say that that's really difficult to do. And I want to be able to take and show you just how easy it is and do a little bit of experimenting along the way. My son's involved quite a bit with the Warhammer games, so I use the logo of a couple of the armies to be able to test out the process. And this was the results of the first test that we did. So today I want to be able to show you how to be able to use the diode laser and be able to etch onto the glass. So let's get started. I want to give a special thank you to all of my Patreons who help support this channel. Their contribution is absolutely fantastic and I greatly appreciate it. If you'd like to support this channel, please go to patreon.com slash Workshop. To do the etching on the glasses, I decided to use the Fox Alien 4040XE with the rotary roller. To be able to accomplish that, I had to be able to remove the waste board. That allowed me to get enough height from the base of the laser down to the rotary roller. Otherwise, it would not have been able to successfully do that. Now, that's a small modification. There's only three screws on the front and three screws on the back that hold the waste board in place. So it's very easy to be able to remove. And with that out of the way, it's just a matter of setting this rotary roller into position, set the Z height, and from that standpoint, you're ready to be able to do the engraving. To be able to set up the 4040XE, you have to be able to remove the cables to the Y1 and the Y2 motors. And then from there, you have a cable that's provided with the rotary roller. You can plug that back into the Y2. That cable is simply going to plug into the stepper motor on the rotary roller. Also with the laser, you have a outlet right there for the 12 volt um, plug in for the laser itself. Now you drop the laser into the mount where your spindle was and you just plug in the laser. On the side of the controller, now this is labeled spindle and laser. Well inside of there is a little switch. So if you're using the laser, that switch has to be moved to the rear toward the word laser. That's a very important step and please make sure you don't forget that. When you're positioning the rotary roller, you want to make sure that it's square to the gantry. Make sure you don't align it to the frame. This side of the frame is actually shorter than the other side. So to be able to position it correctly, align your square against the rotary itself. That will ensure that the rotary is actually parallel to your x-axis. The file that I use was one that I have used in the past. And there's a video, and I'll put a link up at the top to be able to show you where I engrave these onto the plywood. In the Lightburn software, the only requirement that I needed to do is resize it to be able to fit the glasses and to be able to change the power setting and the speed. To prepare the glasses themselves, I'm using lacquer thinner and just a paper towel to be able to clean off the glass. You want to be able to remove any residue of oils or any type of grit or dirt that might be on the glasses. Now you can use the lacquer thinner as I did here, or if you have the denatured alcohol, that will work well. Now both of these do an effective job of being able to clean the glasses and at the same time it dries very, very quickly. So you're not going to be able to lose a lot of time. Because by the time I finish with the last glass, the first one is dry and I'm ready to move on to the next step. Now I'm choosing to use tempera paint. It doesn't have to be this brand. This is just a particular a tempera paint that I had in the uh, shop. So you do want to make sure that you shake it up really well. Now I have tried other paints. I've tried the spray can lacquer and it just did not give the same results that I get with the tempera paint. I've also, as far as applying the tempera paint, tried the foam roller and that resulted in having to do two coats. So I didn't want to do that. So just a simple foam brush with the tempera paint without thinning it, put onto the glass and then just lightly, evenly smooth it out. And that gives the best results that I've been able to obtain. The good thing about this, it dries very, very quickly. Again, 
It only takes about 15-20 minutes and it's completely dry and you're ready to head over to the laser. And it doesn't require two coats. Now you don't want to overwork this. You just want to be able to spread the paint out and then just evenly take the brush and brush the paint itself and that's it. Do not overwork it because then you will get streaks in your paint. Now here are the six that I just finished and they're going to be able to dry in about 15-20 minutes. And here's four that I did earlier and they are ready to go. Now this one off to the right, yeah it's got some streaks in it. I was trying to clean off the brush and that will take a second coat. Now to begin this process, as far as the speeds I'm using 20 inches per minute and I'm having the power set at 60% power. And that seems to be doing a very effective job of being able to uh, laser directly onto this clear glass. In the Lightburn software, I'm engraving the red portion and the blue is actually turned off because that's the outline of that plywood from the previous one. Now I want to be able to experiment a little bit and I'm using the uh, glasses in front of the lens of the camera. And I want to be able to see just how effective it works to be able to show you the engraving process uh, through the lens. And then I want to zoom out and kind of give you an overall picture of the setup itself. Now one of the things I want you to notice in this shot, you can see all of the blue light that's being reflected through the uh, clear glass. Now you don't see this when the glasses are on and of course you don't want to see that but it gives you an idea of just how much that blue light is being able to reflect off of that clear glass. Now I've also tried putting the blue painters tape on the inside of the glass and that helps some but you're still going to get uh, at least some of that reflection. So this way with the red lens in front of the camera it gives you a real good uh, idea of exactly what you're going to be able to see. Oftentimes you'll get the green glasses with your laser. So I want you to see this and you get a lot more light being allowed in. I don't like that. So for my perspective the green glasses are going into the drawer and not being used. I'm going to use just the red ones from now on. Now here's a second pair of the green glasses and this allowed even more light in. Don't use the green glasses. After washing this off, you can see the results. It does have a lot of fine detail and quite frankly we need to brush it off a little bit more to get the remaining paint removed. Here's the second logo that we're going to be engraving and this time I'm going to change the speed down to 25 inches per minute, leaving the power the same. I want to be able to see if there's any noticeable difference in the results. So this is the setting, 25 and 60. So with 25 inches per minute and 60% power, you can see it's doing an excellent job. Again, you can also see an awful lot of the blue light being reflected everywhere. Wear the glasses all the time. So here are the results of the two experiments. I think they're good, but they're not great. So it is going to require some additional testing to be able to get the adjustments just right. But if you like this video today, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification. Thank you for watching the day and I look forward to seeing each and every one of you in the next video. We're going to be experimenting with this more to be able to get these settings a little bit more refined. And you're not going to want to miss it. I look forward to seeing you soon.